Hello and welcome to this online service for Wareham Parish for Sunday the 19th of July. My name is Stuart Coxedge, I'm team vicar in the parish and it's good to welcome you and particularly a warm welcome to you if uh, this is your first time joining in with one of these online services. It's good to have you with us. Now today parts of our service have been recorded here at Lady St Mary Church in Wareham and later on in our service we'll be hearing from Simon who will be preaching to us. Now we were recently contacted by one of our mission partners, Andy Bowerman, uh, who works with the Mission to Seafarers. And we will be hearing a bit more about Andy's work later on as part of Simon's sermon. Now this Sunday, we're also for the first time having a service in church as well as this online service. But once again, you're welcome to join us for the online coffee time after this YouTube service going over to Zoom and you can join in at 10.45 this morning. You will have received an email from Debs with details of the Zoom. And if you're not getting those emails, please do get in touch with us so that we can uh, get you connected in that way. But now as we prepare to worship God together, I'm going to read from the Psalms. This is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord and everything in it the world and all who live in it. He founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. So let's worship him together with this opening song. Blessed be your name, found in the 
showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. We take a few moments of quiet. Father we have sinned against heaven and against you we are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so as we think about the work of the Mission to Seafarers as part of this service, we pray the Collect for Sea Sunday. Creator God, you have made the sea beautiful and fearful. Be with all who sail on it for work or pleasure and give them safe passage with Christ the voyager, who calmed the storm and strengthened his disciples' faith. We ask this in his precious name. Amen.
now before Simon preaches to us, we hear a reading from the Bible read today by Giles Wade. Today's reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger and you invited me in, I needed clothes and you clothed me, I was sick and you looked after me, I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last weekend the Lord spoke to me through two significant encounters. One was a conversation I had at a small garden party in rural Gloucestershire to celebrate uh, my sister's birthday. Uh, and the other was a baptism in Lady St Mary Church, our first service there for uh, four months. The conversation that I had in the garden revolved around two questions. The first of which was, how is the church going to survive the closure of its buildings over such a long period? It was interesting for the, for the lady uh, asking the questions. Church was very much associated with a historical building that had stood in a village for centuries. And she was concerned that the elderly congregation might never be able to return to it. Of course, at one level, as rector of four historic churches and one modern worship centre, I understood completely what she was saying. But at another level, it asks the serious question, what do we mean by church? The second question arose from the fact that her local church had recently raised a great deal of money to help uh, a church in a hard hit area of Africa, whilst there was dwindling reserves in the parish church coffers. Surely this was the wrong way round, she thought. But I expect there are some in our own parish who may be thinking the same thing. At the end of May, we had Mission Sunday and we raised a wonderful sum of money for our mission partners uh, around the world. Whilst our own church funds are suffering as a result of the closure of the church during the lockdown. Have we got our priorities wrong? Doesn't charity begin at home? Well, to find the answer, we need look no further than Matthew 25, part of which we heard today as our Gospel reading. You'll recall it tells of Jesus speaking about the end times, his return in glory at the culmination of the history of the world, when the peoples will be judged. He says they will be judged not on how well they looked after their church buildings, 
but on how well they looked after each other. How did they respond when they saw their brothers and sisters around the world, hungry and naked? What was their reaction when they heard of refugees searching for somewhere safe to live? Did they lift a finger to help those who are deprived of justice or who needed a fresh start? Maybe those who at present are in prison. And what about those not as blessed as us who suffer without the benefits of modern medicine or hospitals? Jesus telling this parable, from Jesus telling this parable, it, it would seem that the neglect of the needy is not just a 21st century problem. It was there in Jesus' day as well. Although through the modern media, we are far more aware of the, world, the extent of the worldwide problem that exists. I think if the last four months in lockdown has taught us anything, it is that the church is much more than meeting in beautiful buildings and that we do not necessarily need our church buildings to be uh, the church as God intended. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not proposing that we get rid of all our historic church buildings, but I do think that we have to ask ourselves, what are our priorities? Bricks and mortar or the well-being of our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world? And what really brought this home was the day after the conversation, the Lord spoke to me at the baptism of a, a boy named Miles in Lady St Mary Church. As with every baptism, it was a very special occasion. It was welcoming this young child into the family of God in a way that Jesus advocated just before he ascended into heaven. Towards the end of the service, there are two very symbolic moments, one of which is the welcome when the congregation welcomes the newly baptised child into the church family. And before we do this, I explain to the congregation that although we are only a very small group of people gathered for this momentous event, we are actually welcoming the candidate on behalf of Christians in every corner of the world and from all major denominations who agreed that it was that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, as St Paul said in the letter to the Ephesians. It really does make my spine tingle as I try to picture from uh, people from every corner uh, of the world being present, endorsing the fact that we are part of one worldwide family. When we think of the church as a body of Christ, comprising of men, women and children from all nations, it puts a very different complexion on what our prior priorities should be. It seems at the end of time, one of the first questions that Jesus will ask is how well did you look after your brothers and sisters in Christ? At the moment, our media is totally absorbed with the coronavirus at home, the effects of lockdown in the UK, on the UK economy and, of course, Brexit. But if you look elsewhere, you'll discover that around the world there is so much suffering. In Western Asia, the Middle East and North East Africa, there has been the perfect storm of coronavirus, a gigantic plague of locusts that at one time spread from India to Ethiopia. Now it's predominantly in East Africa. This coupled with adverse weather conditions that have affected the growing of crops, probably as a result of the climate change and political unrest. There really is so much suffering and it's not hard to see why so many in our world are despairing and crying out for help. Do we hear? Of course, we in the Western world have our troubles too, but compared to the greater part of the world's population, we are in a much better place, with many in a position to help those less fortunate. Jesus, in this parable, suggests that we ignore the needy at our peril. 
let us remember that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters in need, we do for him, for Christ. Should we be raising money for our brothers and sisters around the world? An emphatic yes, we should. Even if it's at the expense of our own lo local church, still an emphatic yes. You see, I believe that if we get our giving right, it means our heart is right with God. And if that is the case, then he will make everything else fall into place. That is what he's promised, and we can read of it time and time again in our Bibles and indeed throughout church history, and I can honestly say it is my experience too. God is always faithful in providing for his people if they are faithful to their calling. So going back to where I started, will the church survive? Again, yes, it will always survive because it is the body of Christ. Will it survive in its present form? Well, God alone knows the answer to that. But all I know is that if we are faithful and keep looking to him, he will guide us to where he wants us to be. And that is what matters. Today is Sea Sunday and you may be forgiven uh, for thinking that I have overlooked this fact. But as well as being a day to remember those who ply the world's oceans for a living, it is also a celebration of the work of the Missions to Seafarers, an organisation that ensures that the love of Christ reaches out in practical and spiritual ways around the world, often caring for those who have no one to care for them in foreign ports and fighting for justice for those who have been exploited by mercenary ship owners. My predecessor, Andy Bauman, is now serving with the missions to seafarers in the Middle East and South Asia. And he has sent us a clip from an Indian documentary that is being made at present, showing the work that is being done. And we're going to watch that now. And let us remember that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do for Christ. Amen. Some of what you see will, will help you understand um, their plight and how this is an injustice that does need to stop and uh, the world needs to do whatever it needs to do, the pressure it needs to apply. Yeah, I'm not sure, but, but something needs to change. I am on board now, it's 26 month, and uh, we are all standard more than a year. No salary, no food, no water. So there they go, they've, they've adapted the hydroponics, famous in Africa. Yes. And doing their own filtered water. Yes. So we are already in 33 months jail. Again, we will go two years jail, it is very difficult. a lot whatever the actions uh, she did uh, I mean uh, the first day she went to school Manasu ore poratam paiya vandu paapana abdinte ana veliyila sollikala to papa ka hai papa idu kattu achi ye niche gaye khelne wale ye mera papa hai ye papa hai Thank 
All that's left of the cargo is this little bit of rubble that you can see uh, at my feet. But when will justice come? Uh, when will these men get what is their right? Hopefully, very soon. कितना दूर है यहाँ से? बहुत दूर, बहुत। बहुत दूर? हाँ, बहुत दूर। कितना दूर है? बहुत दूर, बहुत दूर, बहुत दूर। Our prayers today are led by Dave and Di Kimball and Deb Sparkley. Let us pray to the Father in the power of the Spirit and in union with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church across the world and for all those who, acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord, are being built into the body of Christ. Help us, Lord, to live our lives in obedience to your great commandments to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and to love our neighbour as ourself. <clears throat> we pray, Father, for all those whom you have anointed to lead us in our church across the world. Please, Lord, will you grant to our church leaders the wisdom that they need to guide us in this modern world in accordance with your eternal truth. Grant them, Lord, to stand in awe of your name, to have true instruction on their lips and to walk with you in peace and uprightness. In the complexities of modern life and government, we ask you, please, Lord, to protect them from human weakness and to sustain them in the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. We pray, Lord, for our leaders in Wareham, particularly for Simon, for Stuart and all our clergy. We ask you, Lord, to bless them abundantly with your Holy Spirit as they seek to address the many issues that face them daily. Please, Lord, we pray that you will guide them and grant them your holy wisdom to address the needs of your church in this area. As our local churches struggle with ageing congregations and falling numbers, we ask you, Lord, to grant to our leaders the inspiration of your spirit to lead us out to the harvest yet to be gathered in our area. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we know that our governments have been established by you in all parts of the world, and so we ask you that you would grant them wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We ask that each one would carry out their various responsibilities with honesty and for the benefit of the nations. We pray that all selfish ambitions may be laid aside and that your plans and purposes will be fulfilled for the greater good of all. May your ways be known in our own country and your name be lifted up in the corridors of power. Guide our country into the ways of peace, justice and truth and give boldness to our Christian MPs mm. that their faith in you may be evident to all. Father, on this Sea Sunday, we pray for people whose work takes them to sea, for those to sea, for those serving in the Navy, for merchant seamen and for those who catch fish for their living. Be with them as they work and keep them safe when the weather is bad and the seas are rough. We pray also for those who give help when people get into difficulties at sea, for the lifeboat service and air sea rescue, for coast guards and lifeguards. We thank you for their courage and ask that you will guard and guide them as they work for those in need. We lift before you Andy Bowman based in Dubai and all that he is doing to correct the injustices imposed on seamen imprisoned on their ships without pay, food and water, and absent from their families for many months. We pray that you will grant him success in getting help to those people in the Lord's name, and we pray that you would keep him safe and bless him, his family and his ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. <clears throat> We thank you, Lord, for our local area, and we pray for the needs that we see around us. We especially thank you, Lord, for your mercy shown to us in the ongoing pandemic. We thank you for the relatively small numbers suffering from coronavirus in Dorset, 
and we ask you to please deliver us from potential increases in infection rates as our lockdown is gradually eased. We ask you to bless our local businesses as they reopen within the permitted measures and ask that all will show common sense and a care for others as we branch out from our homes and into the town. We ask your blessing on our local schools and on the leadership teams that have laboured under government guidance to reopen their schools while maintaining the safety of the children and staff. Lord, we thank you for the dedication that they have shown in the last term and pray that you will enable them to recover fully during the summer break that has now begun. We ask you, Lord, to please enable those who are in particular need at this time to come to the notice of those who are in a position to provide help. We thank you, Lord, for the local food bank and for the blessing fund, which have been helping those in need. And we ask that their resources will be renewed as needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We bring into your presence, Father, all who have been looked after in care homes in this parish, and thank you for the dedication of the staff caring for them. We especially pray for those named on, in our weekly news sheet, and for others whose concern is in our hearts. May each one know your presence with them, your healing hand upon them, and your peace. Lord of compassion, we know that you weep with those who weep. Comfort those who mourn, and may they be aware of your loving arms around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, please accept these our prayers in the name of Jesus who called fishermen to be his friends, and who preached from a boat on the Sea of Galilee. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer as the Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So as we reach the end of our service, please do join us for virtual coffee on Zoom afterwards if you're able to. And if you're not receiving emails or updates from us, or if there's anything that we can do to help you at this time, please do feel free to get in touch with us by email or the website or through the parish office. And now we reach the end of our service, we finish with this prayer of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those you know and love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.